Hello and welcome to How to Play Golf the Long Game. Thank you so much for taking part. We're really excited to be able to coach you over the next four weeks. Now, if you come from How to Play Golf the Basics, welcome. This is the next step in your How to Play journey. Yes, over the next four weeks, we're going to be fixing that ball flight, showing you how to hit the golf ball out the centre of the club. Plus, we're working at the longer clubs as well, the hybrid, the fairway metal and the driver, the, the big stick. So thank you so much and let's get started. In golf, there are lots of words that don't often make sense. So today we're going to be talking about the square, open and closed club face relative to the club head. So Andy, what is a square club head? Well, square club head is basically when the club face is pointing at the target. We're talking about setup and impact here when the club strikes the golf ball. So really, this is what we want. We want to get the club face pointing somewhere close to where the target is. Now, if you're a right-handed golfer, an open club face is when the club face will point to the right. This is probably a common thing that we don't necessarily want to see because we get that ball sort of curving out to the right. And a closed club face is very simple, it's the opposite to that, it's where it points to the left. So that really helps you understand what that means when we're talking about the club face because we're going to be discussing this as we go through the weeks. So that's as simple as it is. Let's get into this week's practice. It's now time to get into your practice and what better place to do it on the ninth fairway here at La Reserva at Soto Grande. Beautiful hole Andy coming up, looking forward to you playing your shot. So if you've done how to play the basics or you've got some experience in golf and you've been building a swing, that's fantastic. But what's starting to probably happen to you now is you're starting to get the golf ball going right and left and it could be a consistent bad shot. So what we're going to be doing in this practice segment is working really hard to show you how to get rid of that shot and also understanding what may be causing it. So there's two main things that we need to look for, the club path and the club face. Now the club face is the most important one so that's the one we're going to focus on today. So Andy, if we've got a golf ball which is going to the right and to the left, yep. we know we've got to look at the grip, haven't we? So let's go with a right-handed golfer. If the ball is going to the right, how could the grip be influencing this? Yeah, do you, you know what, no matter what level you are, I think we have to look at the hands as well, Piers, because it's just so influential on what this club face is doing. So don't really bypass the grip. It's a great place to actually just come back to. So if we're hitting it to the right and we're a right-handed golfer, we often see that the hands are too far round to the left. We call this a weak grip. So if I just exaggerate this, I'm gonna get the lead hand a little round to the left like this. I can't see any knuckles on the back of that hand. And I get my trail hand a little too far round to the left where the V between the thumb and forefinger point to my left shoulder. This is a weak grip. Now what happens here now, as I swing back and down, the club face will want to return to the right, open. And we know that open club face wants to get the golf ball starting out to the right. So we'll start to see these as we play golf and then we'll have to make compensations in the golf swing, which we don't want to do either. So if we can really build a very neutral grip, a very consistent grip, yes. it, makes us, it makes it so much easier to produce an efficient swing with as little compensations as possible. And, and this is really, really important. Andy is saying here that if you don't get the grip correct, you make compensations. So we're definitely going to stress that start with the grip so these compensations don't come into your swing. So I'm going to ask you to hit a shot with this weak grip. Okay. I'm probably not safe here, am You're I? You're definitely not so safe. So I'm going to come over now. here. This ball is definitely going to the right. Okay, so both hands round too far to the left. I'll do a normal golf swing here. You'll just see where this ball starts off. <laughs> and that was no difference in terms of what I was doing there, but the grip, is, I mean, it's very short as well because the club face is open, it adds loft and it's really weak, which we don't want. So that's you trying, you're just doing a normal shot normal there with just swing. a very poor grip. Exactly. Wow, okay. So let's look at the, 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 the person who's in the golf ball left for a right-handed golfer. So this is a really common one as well. We get the hands too far round to the right. So you can see now here, I can see the hole at the back of the, the hand here, all of the knuckles. You can see the, the logo on the glove is facing the camera. The right hand often gets too much underneath the club like this. This is what we call a strong grip, and this is gonna have the opposite effect of what we've just seen. As I swing back and down now, the club face will want to return and point to the left in a closed position. The ball's gonna start out left, and I'll probably be hunting for the golf ball in the trees <laughs> down there, which we don't want, obviously. Hit one here, let's see it go. I might lose again. this golf ball, Pierce, here. Again, really important. This is the grip that we often see people start with. They get a little bit too much round to the right. Okay, so I'm really, you can see I'm getting those hands really round to the right there, normal golf swing. And you can see that ball starting left. And 
I'm definitely going to be hunting for that. But if you, two, if you were two people hitting ball right and left like that, I wouldn't want to be playing golf with you. I'd exactly. have a quiet time, that's for sure. Okay, so what do we, what do we need then to actually get, these, get the grip correct? Well, let's go through just building a neutral grip again. Let's just recap on what we want in terms of the position of the club in the hand. So first of all, let's build it with the, with the lead hand. So if I take my club, I bring it up to sort of club head about eye height like that. Now I'm going to position the lead hand just to the side of the club like this, and I'm going to place the, the grip diagonally across the base of the little finger, across the heel pad, diagonally through the, the bottom part of that forefinger there. So if I just make sure I'm in a good place there, and then close my hand, I now have a neutral grip. Now when I'm looking down at this now, I can see two to maybe three knuckles. The thumb is slightly down the right hand side of the club. So I've got a great left hand there. Now if I put the right hand on on the side, keeping the club angled like this, I'm going to place it across the base of the fingers again here, close it around, and then just slide it up so they touch each other. Now the thumb and the forefinger form that V, and that is now pointing to the right of my chin. So I've got a really neutral grip there, and this now will really help me deliver a square club face back to the golf ball. It really minimises sense. those chances of me doing some very funky moves to get back to square. It makes absolute sense. So building that grip is key. Okay, should we see you hit one of those then? Yeah, let's see if I can. I've got to hit one straight now, haven't I? Huge. <laughs> well, anywhere in between them will be classing as a straight okay, shot. I think. So I can see two knuckles still there. I know that V is pointing somewhere to, to the right of my chin. So normal golf swing again. And that was pretty much as you said, right between very the nice. Both. Again, look at look at the distance distance <laughs> on that pier. So much further as well compared to the other two. It was actually a lot better, wasn't it? It was. It was a lot better. Okay, so look, those grips are really important. Now, this is something you may be asking. Well, we're still talking about the baseball grip. There are some options on how you can intertwine the hands and the fingers. So Andy, there's a couple of uh, simple options. What are those? Okay, well, the first one, let's talk about the interlock. This is probably... The, the first thing that most people get told that they need to do, you need to join the fingers together. Well, Tiger like Woods and Jack Nicklaus do this one, so it makes it, sense. Exactly, yes. Yeah. So the interlock is when the, the little finger on the trail hand just sort of interlocks with the forefinger on the, uh, the lead hand like that. So we just lock the fingers together. Now we don't want to go too deep in, in like this because that can cause some poor things. We just want to join them together lightly like that, making sure that the hands stay in the very similar place. We don't want to lose the positioning. This is really important. Again, really important, as Andy was saying before, bring the hand in from the side. As he says, we don't want to be coming underneath like that. Yeah. That's going to be really bad for you and cause a bad grip. Exactly. Let's go to the overlap. This is something that I actually use. So there's the baseball. The overlap is just literally overlapping the little finger on the glove hand like that. So you can see there, I'm just sort of lightly resting on the knuckle. Mm -hmm. This is something that I feel comfortable with. What we would say is there's nothing wrong with the baseball. There's nothing wrong with any of these. Just do what feels comfortable, but most importantly, do what gives you the results. If you're yes. having to go with a few of these and one feels more comfortable than the other, stick with the one that feels comfortable to you and actually works. That's the important okay. thing. Okay, absolutely. All right, so look, we've spoke about obviously how the grip influences the club face. How about the first part of the backswing? We call that the move away. How can that influence right and left shots? Well, it's, uh, it's so important that we get off to a good start in the swing because if we get off to a poor start with the club face moving all over the place, Again, we have to make some adjustments, some compensations. So if we can just get it starting in the right way, it's, again, it's gonna make things so much easier for you. So let's, let's talk about the, the right shot, Pierce, yeah, to start with. Yes. So in the move away, somebody who hits it a little bit too much to the right, we want you to check this. So as I swing back now to what we call waist height position, if the club face is sort of pointing too much towards the sky, this leading edge too much up, this can cause the ball to go to the right. It might even be more than that. This is what we call open. Now, if you're hitting the golf ball to the left, we often see that the leading edge or the club face is pointing down towards the ground now. This is closed. So these sort of positions, these excessive movements of the club face can influence the impact. Mm -hmm. Now, in an ideal position, ideal point, we want the club face to be parallel to the spine angle like so. So if the club face is parallel to the spine angle here, we are off to a good start and it means we're not going to have to make those little adjustments to get it back on track. Yeah, I think if this is really important. We're not actually trying to say that there's only one way to swing. It's important for you to develop your own swing, but we want to make sure there's a few key positions that if you can put it in that area, you're definitely going to be a lot better off. And the one thing that I will say going into this, Andy, is that the grip massively influences it the does. move away as well, doesn't it? it? Does. So if you've got a hooking grip, you're probably going to be in a hooking place when it comes to the move it away. Does. Now the way I like to practice this is I'm just taking my setup and you can do this at the range as well. You can either video yourself, use a mirror, or if you haven't got those things, swing back to waist height, 
take a look and see, is that club face in a good spot? Now, if you do this without looking, you swing back and you then take a look and you can see the club face is sort of wanting to be open or closed, then you have that sensation. So then rehearse the moves until you get the feeling of what is good. What is it when that club face gets to that sort of parallel to the spine angle? And you'll start to rehearse this move then. And the more you do this, the more it's comfortable and the more consistent you're gonna be from doing that as well. Suddenly, what you do at work, your workload is gonna get a lot worse. What you do at home, you're gonna do a lot less around the house as well because you'll be practicing this all the time. And I think a video camera as well on the phones now is also a good way of just checking this. I'm gonna hit one more shot, Pierce, because that last one was nice. So I'm just gonna go with the way I would rehearse this on the, on the range. So normal setup, obviously I've got a good grip here now. I'm gonna swing back, take a look. That club face is looking good there. I like it. Okay, now I'm gonna go. See if I can produce another good one. Again, nicely on the green Beautiful. there. Again, it makes such a difference if you can get that first part right. It sure does. So we hope you're enjoying the video. If you are, hit that thumbs up. And if you've got any questions, make sure you leave them down below. And also don't forget to check out the rest of the plan over at meandmygolf.com. The driver is definitely unique when it comes to the rest of the set. So Andy, let's just go through this. Well, look, first of all, look at the size of it. It's a long club. It's <laughs> the longest club in the bag. And I think the men's generally average is about over 45 inches long. But you've also got a few different things. This shaft is carbon fiber, so it's graphite. Obviously in the steel, in the iron, sorry, you get a lot of steel shafts, but generally with the driver, you're gonna see this graphite carbon fiber, which is very light because it helps you swing the club faster. Remember, this is all built for speed. Then you've got the heads, a great big whopping head, which hopefully gives you a little bit more room for error on the face here as well. But then you have the options in loft, anything between eight degrees and 15 degrees loft, depending on your swing speed and actually how you swing the golf club. So there's quite a few options. And also in some of the, the latest drivers, you'll have this adjustability in the club where you can actually move some of the weights around and play around with it to actually complement the things that you're working on. So certainly a very different club to hit, but unique in the fact that it's very long, it's designed for speed, and it's quite forgiving. So, so much fun when you actually get to use this as well. It definitely is. Now you know what it's about, it's time to hit it. Now this is where things get interesting. We're talking about the driver, the big dog, and Andy, there's no better place than the 18th hole here at La Reserva. What a beautiful tee shot we have here. I'm looking forward to it in this one, actually. Absolutely. Right, okay, so we're going to be talking about the concept and the setup. So Andy, the concept, what are we looking to achieve when we're hitting a driver? Well, I think hopefully you know now that we can either hit down, level, or up with a golf club. And obviously with the irons, we want a slightly downward hit because that's what's going to produce that nice solid strike. Now with the driver, it's different. We want to get this thing hitting it down the fairway <laughs> as far as possible. And to do that, it helps if we can have a slightly positive attack angle, which means we can hit it slightly on the way up. So there's certain things that we need to do in the golf swing and in the setup that just help us to do this, to really give it the maximum distance that we need. First thing is tee. We're gonna tee it really high. So as we've got such a large club head here, we're gonna tee it quite high. So I like to really get it pegged up, Pierce. Quite a lot of the golf ball is above the crown of the club there, because if I can hit it really center or slightly above center, that really helps as well. So the first thing is just getting the tee height really high. The second thing is, Nice wide stance, we need a nice wide base. We wanna use the legs to create power, but it also helps us get more behind it to hit up on the golf ball. And you can see here, I've got my alignment stick on the ground here. This is where we want the ball position to be. We want it forward in the stance. It's gonna feel strange having it here, but having it forward in the stance really helps the club bottom out a little bit early and then collect it off the tee on the way up there. So just a couple of simple things that we can do. Now, one more thing and that is how we tilt the body. Now, a lot of people with the ball position so forward are gonna to wanna to creep this way. We're gonna ask you to go the other way. So I'm gonna take my setup here, lead hand on only, trial hand on the leg here, and all I'm gonna do is actually slide it down a few inches towards the knee, and then I'm gonna place my hand on the golf club. Now, notice what this has done. It's tilted the spine, it's got me a little bit more over to the right-hand side, and this really helps add to that attack angle where I can sweep it off here. Absolutely. So, few key things there. We've got the setup being a little wider, ball position being forward, a little bit of tilt. And just in terms of weight on the feet, we want to be 50-50 
it's not the end of the world, even if you're favouring the right leg. Again, it puts you more behind the golf ball. Okay, just that, do that one more time. And what I really like about this is when Andy slides his hand down his leg and then puts his hand on the golf club, notice his shoulders. They're still running pretty square. Sometimes when we bring the hand round, Andy, how does it go? All right, so some people bring it round like so, and then the shoulders go well off to the left. So if you're left with your shoulders with your driver, it's a big, big no-no. So. Oh, I'm ready for this. Oh, one this, this is looks cool. a great hole to finish on. The sun so is I'm perfect. Do, take my setup, trail hand on, a little bit of a slide down here. I'm ready to go. I still need to put a good swing on it though, Pierce. And that is an absolute beauty. Look at the height on that. It was Pierce. actually better than all the practice shots that you hit. That's before. a lot better than the practice shots. <laughs> I'm warmed up now. Absolutely. All right, so look, this is your practice for week one. First of all, we want you to have two practice sessions a week, hitting 50 golf balls on those practice sessions. And then we need to break it up. So you hit 10 shots working at your new grip, 30 shots working at the club face move away, making sure the club face is square, and then your final 10 shots with the driver. Yes, exactly. And don't forget, if you want to take part in the rest of the plan where we've covered so much more, including how to hit the hybrids, the fairway metals, how to create power and a beautiful flowing golf swing, click the link in the description and we look forward to coaching you through the rest of the plan. Thanks again.